Hi, this is Tim and Dole. Welcome to Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. A podcast about the outdoors, hunting, and being a steward of the land. Iowa Missouri Hybrids has been a family-owned business since the 1930s, located in historic Keosauqua, Iowa. Aaron and his team are a one-stop shop for farmers, hunters, and landowners. For your conservation program, CRP, food plots, and all planting needs, give Aaron at IMH a call and tell him the two dumbasses sent you. Established in 1934, Pete and Shorty's is located on Main Street, Clarksville, Iowa. Pete and Shorty's is famous for their half-pound burgers, hand-breaded tenderloins, and homemade pizza. The beer is always cold, and the Bloody Marys are the best in town. Stop in and tell Mike and Amy that the two dumbasses sent you. All right, Tim. Welcome to uh, Midwest Hunting and Outdoors by Two Dumbasses. Uh, today's episode, we're not going to talk about what we have been doing because it's been below zero and we're, we're pretty much blowing snow and keeping warm. It's brutal. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I even went outside yesterday um, at all, except to let the dog out. And he didn't want to go out there. So. <laughs> um, but today's episode is uh, a recap and a different look of these trail cameras we've got in front of us. So um, just to revisit these trail cameras, we've got the Acaso, and we'll put the model numbers in here. We've got sure. an Acaso, we've got a Wild Game Innovation, we've got a Stealth, we've got a Browning, we've got a Moultrie, um, we've got an Ape Man. We even got an Ape Man in here, and we've got a Primos. Yep. So uh, we, we certainly not all the cam cameras that are out on the market, but the ones that we had we really wanted to uh, do some testing on it. So hopefully our viewership has been watching our bracketology. But we wanted to take a little different approach to ranking these cameras uh, on more than just picture quality and sensitivity. Yep. So um, that's, that's what we're going to do today. Well, and, and also just adding in that between us, I mean, we each run roughly 20 cameras, give or take. And this is just a subset of what we had. And these cameras are also, um, the technology is two to three years old, so we're trying to make sure that they're comparable in, in technology advances. So, Yeah, so let's talk about how we evaluated these cameras. So we took each camera and we said, you know what, if we're going to buy a camera or use a camera, what criteria is super important to us. Yep. For example, you know, price certainly is one of those criteria. Um, but let's, how many of those criteria did we use? My gosh, I mean, we spent quite a bit of time on this actually. So, uh, so we started to think about things as we have. Well, to answer your question, we have six six different criteria. So we rank these on six different criteria, and and, and those criteria. So we started to look at like ease of operation um, and as we started to think about all the things that we valued we started to then categorize them so ease of operation we had its programmability uh, SD card removal uh, ease of battery installation how installation of the battery and then does it have tripod tripod mounts so we would then take based upon those subsets of that category and we would evaluate each camera and what we would do is find out who is the best and then we'd rate everybody against that. The, the next one we look at was is, uh, sensitivity. Um, 30, yards or, 30 yards was our kind of our world-class benchmark off of these cameras and then 20 yards. And that was pretty much all around sensitivity. Then we talked about quality of picture, quality of picture day, quality of picture at night, and then we went into functionality. And functionality, as you can see, as you can imagine, I mean, everybody's trying to come up with that different edge. And uh, so video, bursts of pictures, time lapse, number of batteries for operation, external plug, solar capability for batteries, number of batteries for operation, and then SD card uh, type. And so as you can imagine, uh, 
from top to bottom on these cameras. They're, they're kind of all over the board, but they have a lot of similarities in functionality. And then lastly, we looked at was uh, price. And then through some of our tests that we did for our Super Bowl, we, in, we basically used some of those results to come up with, or to help us with our analysis. Yeah, yeah, and um, we used a tool um, that we've, we've had success with in the past. We're not gonna go into the numbers, um, but not all of these were weighted equally. For example, we had, you know, sensitivity, sensitivity weighted the highest. Um, and functionality rated the lowest. And uh, the thought there for us, and the reason I'm bringing this up is it may, may be different for you, you know, different viewers, what they went on a trail camera. But if it doesn't take pictures, it really doesn't do me any good, doesn't do anybody any good. Um, and some of the functionality is great, but I don't use, like I'll use video very rarely, that's just not a big, but I know what's big, I know video is important, and I know it's important to a lot of people. But like time lapse and, you know, can I take seven pictures in a burst versus two or five? You know, I don't know. I, I'm certainly not going to pay more money for some of those functionality things. Well, I mean, we certainly start to see how some of these cameras perform adverse weather. And the more bursts you're going to have, you're just going to burn up your batteries all that much quicker. So, uh, again, I'm not saying that there's not a use for that. but it's not how we use our cameras. Yeah, yeah. So again, we, we want to give you a snapshot of these seven cameras that uh, we rated. Um, they're all available, we checked, they're all available to buy today on the internet um, or through your stores. And um, the prices that we'll put in the video are also relevant um, to today's time. But let's get into this. What uh, What's the first criteria that we uh, rated these on and what were the winners? So the first one was ease of operation as we talked about. And we'll go through all the, the elements that fit underneath there, but the winner, or there are actually two winners. For ease of operation, we went with the Primos and the Browning. Yep. All right, so let me talk to you. This is your camera, this is mine. I'm a little familiar with this. I'll let you talk to this, but uh, Primos, probably the easiest camera I've owned anyway to set up. It's got toggle switches on uh, to set up most of the um, functionality that you're going to set up. If you want video or, or photo or both, and then how many picture bursts, and, uh, and it's just super easy to set the time and, and to get it right off the get-go what you want to do. It is super easy to yep. set up. Yeah, that's what I like about it. It's, uh, the, I would tell you this, the batteries go in the cover here and there's no, no cover for it. And they can be tough to get out. Um, that's kind of a knock on this. Um, but um, as far as set up, setting up this camera ready to go, most people could set this up in you know, minutes Good. ready to go. Good. And the uh, Brownie? So the Brownie is very similar to you. It's, a, it's, got a, it's got a battery pack for the six batteries pretty easy to remove. Um, I've had it for about two years. The, uh, it is starting to, to where it's got an eject button for this to where um, it can kind of get a little stuck at times. So I'm going to have to do a little maintenance to it, but it's got a regular SD card in it. Uh, very easy to program and um, it's very reliable. I've been super happy with this. Yeah, and, and one of the criteria we used because of uh, our age, I guess, right? Let's just be uh, open and honest about it. Is, uh, you know, can you program this without glasses? You know, you're out in the field, you may not have glasses with you the whole time, and both of these, uh, we felt, easily could be done without that. And uh, that, that separated some of, the, some of the other cameras out of that. Yeah, it's a big deal. Okay, yep. cool. So winners on that, um, as far as ease of operation, Primos, and the Brown. Yep. Next criteria. Next. Criteria was quality of pictures day, and uh, we rated this as a um, pretty high from a weighting perspective. We give this this was our second highest rating at, at a weighting of a nine on a scale of one to ten, and the winner of this was the Primos, the Moultrie, and the Brownie.
All great pictures. Really great. I mean, I'm not saying that there wasn't any graininess, but you could zoom in, and in some cases, I mean, you could see the eyelashes on the deer. So we'll post some of the pictures uh, a little later in the episode, but um, just to give you an idea of the quality of these pictures, but really excellent pictures. Yeah, yeah, and, and to me, the day pictures are the most important ones because you can't shoot a deer at night. It's nice to know that there's a deer walking through that you might be able to pattern um, and he's doing it at night and some things you could do differently, but the day pictures are the ones that are most important to me. Yep, I agree. Yeah. Cool. All right, how about night? Well, quality of pictures at night, uh, we had two winners. Two winners. And as you might have guessed, Primos and the Brownie. Brownie? With the, now, the noticeable thing on this one, it's got the white light. Right, and we talked about in previous episodes, and the brown, which Primos. one? Primos. Yeah, so uh, black IR lights, but really good pictures. Super good. Yeah. I mean, discernible difference between these cameras and the rest of the cameras. And I don't think the megapixels on these two cameras is over the top. I mean, I think they're... 12, 14. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're not shooting 20 megs or anything like that, so... Cool. Anything else you'd say on night pictures? Nope. Okay. Nope. Cool, cool. Uh, so then we get to sensitivity and again we used, uh, nope, excuse me, let's back up. The next one's functionality. And there was some significant differences in functionality between a few of these and the rest of them. Yeah, so we waited functionality and we, we haggled on this for quite a bit because uh, your initial thing is, is all this different functionality, you want to weight them. Functionality is really a high uh, item, but as we got into it, functionality is, it's nice, but it's not super important. There's, there's two or three, four key things on functionality and I don't really utilize the rest. So um, we ended up weighting this a five on a scale of one to 10. Some of you may disagree with us. Uh, but, but that's how we use our cameras and that's what, what we're doing here. So when we look at functionality, um, gosh, almost, I mean, almost all of our cameras here had a nine on a scale of one to 10. And so it's like, you know, it's not really a discernible difference one camera to the next. I and mean, we, we certainly had, there's probably even more to talk about, hey, who was the loser yeah. in this? And the loser was really the wild game innovations. Yeah. Yeah, so. And it got a three out of, three out of nine. Yeah, and uh, this, this actually performed decent picture quality wise, but uh, this really will uh, only take pictures and video. No time lapse. Um, bursts? Does it have bursts? No bursts. No bursts. So if you're want one picture and uh, you can set the delay. Set the delay. So less functionality in, in this camera than uh, significantly less functionality than the others. And it, I mean it works okay but I mean basis what we've done here I, I think my purchasing habits are going to be different. But we could talk that more later. Yeah, and then there's one other one, right? Uh, that one, uh, that one took a hit for functionality, and then the uh, stealth. The stealth, the stealth took uh, a hit on functionality. It, um, it is set up that it'll do some uh, custom, custom pictures, but uh, it's limited on the number of bursts that you can take, and um, we felt that that was a day. Yep. All right. So then we go into sensitivity, and we rated sensitivity as super high. I mean, uh, we gave it a 10 out of 10 from a weight perspective. And again, weighting's uh, a multiplier impact. And so we use our Super Bowl analysis to kind of come up with this of cameras. And uh, they, this really kind of separated the, the wheat from the chaff, so to speak. And so our winners were, we had Browning, and Moultrie were our top two cameras. And again, this gets back to that battery usage. It really, it starts to pull out on if they were, if these cameras used a lot of energy in taking pictures, 
those batteries in time over over 24 hours or 16 hours of our test would they just wouldn't have the juice. So these two cameras really performed consistently in the bracketology when we're collecting the data. These two um, took relatively the same number of pictures, and they were above and beyond the rest of the cameras. Yeah. So um, you know which. We felt was key that if you're not getting pictures of deer walking in front of your camera, then really isn't used to having a camera there at all. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. So those two are winners. Let's talk about the losers yeah. in, in the sensitivity. So the losers, uh, our lowest score in this was the eight man. Eight man. Eight man got a zero. Yeah, it didn't perform at all. Um, very, um, very low. Sensitivity. It took the fewest pictures, and I'm really concerned about the forty dollars <laughs> I spent on a test camera. I guess if you're going to test a camera, forty bucks is not bad. Yeah, you're not out of the whole lot. So we'll we'll see. We'll see where it ends up. And then we had two others that uh, uh, did towards the bottom, and it was the Wild Game Innovations and the Stealth. Yeah. Then again, if you're not picking up deer or wildlife that you want to uh, get pictures of and develop some patterns on, that's a big problem. Yep. So, to totally be, agree. Take a ding on these. So our, our, our uh, well, we actually have two more criteria, but one that we, we scored on, price. So price we felt was a, a high level, so we rated on a, a scale of nine from a weighting perspective. And we kind of started to separate them on uh, natural breaks in prices between what we had here. And as you would think is, is that the, the lowest price cameras are going to get the highest score. So uh, Wild Game Innovations, Ape Man, and Acaso all received nines for their price. But the Moultrie Primos both got sevens. So now you're starting to see, hey, that's seven, but they're performing really well. That's pretty good. That's a nice little uh, correlation that you like to see. Yeah, and I think just to put numbers to this, our low-end cameras, under $50, uh, $40 to $50, I think they all fell in that range. The median price cameras were, uh, you know, 50 to 75, 75 I think. Yeah. And then we had, I think, only one camera above that. The Browning was 109 or 100 bucks. Um, so it really played. It was interesting because would you would you pay that extra 20 bucks to make sure that you're getting pictures or some functionality that you really want? Uh, in the most case, when we were talking about it, is that the answer is 20 bucks is nothing if if it's going to give me pictures versus no pictures. I mean, because what we're trying to do is, is come up, it's like, hey, how many points for a dollar of value, so to speak, right? Not necessarily, it's not exactly that simple, but you want to factor in that price so that you're getting the highest value you can for your dollar. And so, and as we, I'm not going to go into great detail, but the only, was we did the 20 and 30 yard test, the only one that passed the 30 yard test was the Browning. Mm -hmm. Super sensitive. Yeah, and uh, it, it also takes great pictures a day and night. And uh, however, it was the most expensive camera that we tested in, in our in our uh, criteria matrix. And it kind of impacts our final results. It does. So let's get right into the final results here, Timbo. So when we looked at our results, I'm going to just go through the top three again. We used all of our 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 points and our our weighting criteria to come up with this. The winners of Primos uh, came out with 394 points uh, basis our scale. That was our number one, but very close behind it was uh, the Moultrie at 384 points. And then just behind it was the Browning at 378. So I think the um, summary of these three cameras is, is, hey, if you're looking for a great camera, and you don't want to spend a lot of money under 75 bucks, under 80 bucks. The this Moultrie A A uh, A700, which won our bracketology, um, and the Primos Proof One, um, 
from a two dumbass standpoint, we're saying, you know, these are darn good cameras. We, they come highly recommended. Yep. We have great luck with them. We hate ourselves for uh, liking the Moultrie because we've got some past history that's not necessarily good on Moultrie. Um, but man, you can't beat these two, these two particular models of camera. And as much as I love this, this Browning, I don't know why you would spend the extra money. You know, when you start to evaluate these three, three cameras, it's like, I don't know why I would spend the money on, the extra money on this Browning when I can get similar performance at a much lower price. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, can't go wrong with these three. No, love to have them in your inventory. Yeah, yeah. Now, let's say um, if I wasn't interested in that, um, I, did, I didn't have 80 bucks to spend or even 75 bucks to spend, you know, in the lower tier, if I was looking for something around 50 bucks or, or that part, where, where do we fall? Well, so when you think about sensitivity and everything involved, um, the Acaso and Stealth both come up to the next, but I, I would, our, our point structure is not exactly perfect. I would probably steer away from the Acaso takes great pictures, but it's an energy hog. And again, we didn't know that until we put it through this. It takes great pictures, both day and night. But the problem is, is um, it uses battery uh, energy really quick with every picture. And over time, your battery's not gonna last, and then it's gonna stop taking pictures in the evening. The other thing on the Acaso is, is it's the only camera that we have that uses the micro SD card. Yeah, which doesn't seem like a big deal, but when you're out trying to exchange those SD cards and you said you've lost a couple already. You're guaranteed to lose at least one or two using this camera. I mean, it's going to happen. Yeah, so it's, um, that, that's something to take in consideration if you're going to spend that money, right? So yeah. I would probably, if I was going to go for a lower tier camera, I'd probably, for the price, I'd probably, if I could get it on sale, I'd buy the Stealth. I think this, that's... This model. Yeah, so and again, this model is uh, 50 bucks. Yeah, 54 bucks. 54 dollars. Uh, not bad. I think the other learning that I would toss into this uh, analogy is, is that um, it's not necessarily the brand. It's the brand and the model. And um, if you're going to test them side by side, make sure that you go out. So, for example, on this Moultrie, even though both of us love it, I wouldn't buy another Moultrie. Uh, thinking that it might perform as good as this without testing. That's right. Pretty confident in this A700, but if it was A700i or A9000, other models out there, um, I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't have the same confidence I would on, on this A700. And we'll even, I was a little skeptical on this <laughs> Moultrie A700. I actually have two of them that my aunt and uncle gave me for Christmas, so I decided to put and test the other A700 I had out just to see, did I just get a good camera or did they both perform at the same level? And they both performed at the same level. So I feel really good about this model. The Primos, I have three of them. I got a great deal on them two or three years ago and um, I wish I would have bought 10 of them instead of three of them. But uh, these three cameras, uh, I use one of them for security so when I, for me, what that means is this thing is out 24-7 and uh, 365 days a year. So uh, for three years, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the reliability of it. And again, the functionality, it, it gives me everything I need. And then I think the picture quality and the shutter speed on this is, is really good. So that's why it's in the top two or three um, for sure. So it comes highly recommended. That's from great. That okay. And uh, that, that pretty much concludes, Joel, our, uh, our analysis of these seven brands. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed watching this. Um, Tim, we've got some other episodes coming up right after this, right? Um, some tips and tricks? Yes, we, uh, we actually engaged our two dumbass wives to put on a tips and tricks on, on processing your deer. So what they're going to do for us is, is they're going to walk us through how we can venison and uh, it's absolutely great it's probably my favorite way to have venison beyond steaks so 
uh, stay tuned for that tips and tricks episode. Yeah, and, and you know, we're, uh, I'm putting the challenge out here to our viewers. We're not getting the feedback and the comments that uh, we want and we need. So if you don't have a personal opinion on these cameras, I don't know what topic we're going to throw out there that's going to get personal opinions. So we would love to hear um, your pros and cons to any of these cameras or your cameras that you've got. Um, you know, use the, those typing boards and let's put the comments in, uh, in our website. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on YouTube or to uh, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Yeah, until then, be, be safe, safe, have fun, and, and get outdoors. outdoors. Thanks for listening or watching our show. We have some exciting topics and guests coming up. We ask that you subscribe to our channel on YouTube and follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We look forward to hearing your suggestions for topics, questions, and comments. This is Two Dumbasses signing off. Until next time, be, be safe, safe, have, have fun, fun, and, and get, get outdoors. outdoors.